Um, well, my name is Paul Eise, and I'm uh, working as a strategic advisor at Royal Hescaning DHV in the Netherlands. Um, and I've enjoyed working in this field um, uh, for more than 30 years as a writer, project manager, um, department head, and um, strategic advisor, but also as an innovator. Now, about going digital. Can you imagine that all the information necessary for decision making is visual information and that there is no text involved anymore? That really would mean a change. If the information would be um, understood by everyone, what would that mean for decision making and for all stakeholders involved and their support for the decision and the project? Today's digital technology gives us a great potential to improve environmental impact assessments and particularly uh, the environmental impact report. It's interesting uh, to explore what has led us to this point and what the future will bring. And I will do this by uh, distinguish between the past, uh, the present and the future. I once gave a presentation in Porto in 2012 in which I highlighted how complex uh, regulations had become. While new uh, legislation created plenty of work for consultants, it certainly didn't generate support for the EIA and decision-making process. The volume of an impact um, assessment report also <coughs> expanded in parallel with its growing complexity. Uh, the word that I came across in this context is warn. Written once, read never. And I think it's fair to say that much of the information compiled is never used in the decision-making process, simply because it is far from appealing for stakeholders uh, to wade through a thousand pages and, and sometimes even more. These thick reports motivated me to head in a different direction. We needed to embrace the visual and the digital. If a picture is uh, worth a thousand words, then this is key in making information more accessible. If in addition it was also possible to supply, trans uh, to supply it transparently in logical layers uh, with unnecessary information filtered out, then this would encourage people to become more involved and informed in the decision-making process. In 2015, in Florence, the digital era was the main theme of the com uh, conference. Even though digital uh, um, attracted lots of interest that year, even becoming something of a buzzword, it was clear that EIA, um, in the EIA world, this was not a hot topic at that time. Yet I remember that um, at the conference dinner, a few peers held the same view as I did, that digital technology presented a big opportunity. Uh, for those who missed Nagoya, Montreal, and Durban, I would like to show the results of this thinking uh, now a couple of years later. In partnership with the Ministry for Infrastructure and Environment, we converted an existing environmental impact report into an interactive digital report, where we replaced over 70% of the text with visual information. We used different forms of visualization, 360 degrees uh, images, to describe the current situation, uh, like you see now, uh, just uh, by using, for instance, the um, street view instead of um, describing in, in, in a couple of pages how the uh, situation looks like. Other uh, things like uh, the diagrams, to use that in, with layered information um, below it, so you don't have to um, write that out completely. Um, this project was about uh, a dike improvement project, and um, we used animations to explain the, um, the fail mechanisms of a dike. Normally, for non-technical people, that really takes a lot of pages to explain how that works. But just by uh, making three 30-second animations, uh, for a lot of people, it's clear why this project um, was, was done. Here you see um, um, the results of uh, using a 3D model, where we uh, created in the same way, like the street view, the, um, the situation, how it will be in the future. So. Um, you can show in this way how the alternatives look like and just look around in the, in the world how it will be um, after the project is done. Here you see a combination of GIS, creative design and context, uh, content. So um, also by clicking uh, on the different dots you see 
why uh, elements uh, are there and what the reason is to, um, to design it this way. Use of sliders and also the use of uh, GIS, also again with layered information, makes it much more um, easy to understand what is happening. And in this case also um, you are, we are able to uh, show the uh, results of, in this case, a noise model, uh, so the contours from the different um, alternatives. A fine example of a digital um, environmental impact report was also developed in Iceland. This uh, is a summary report and it took a different format but again um, used a great deal of visual information. Also uh, uh, use of, of um, uh, video in there and um, the maps with um, indeed in this case also the layered information in photographs etc. In delivering this entirely different way of reporting we sought to be as user friendly as possible. After all the goal is to make it easy to apply this way of working. At this point we decided to take our concept to the outside world. In my view it's only possible to gain um, acceptance of this new way of working when the possibilities are widely accepted by competent authorities, initiators and other stakeholders and um, everyone is invited to participate. Today, more than two years later, um, many organizations around the world have adopted this form of reporting, producing some excellent examples. This brings a number of challenges. In 2017, the EIA Commission in the Netherlands reviewed this pilot project which we briefly reviewed a moment ago. The Commission um, was enthusiastic about the approach and highlighted a number of areas uh, for attention and consideration for further development. These included the addition of a search engine, uh, a comment option and the ability to print. Well, print printing is uh, uh, not exactly in line with the digital way of working. It is still a frequent request. Among the challenges are uh, questions concerning statutory obligations. Does this way of working comply with current legislation? Um, such as file retention, for example. There are also various archiving issues, for example. Is it possible to create a frozen version for a document? Another question concerns the need to link um, participation and decision-making processes in preparing the digital report. An interesting uh, observation here is that we have already organized public information events um, for which no separate presentations uh, or posters were prepared. And uh, instead, with the help of large touch screens, um, people were guided through the uh, information digitally. The focus areas specified by the EIA Commission and our experience gained um, in preparing the digital reports uh, prompted us to start looking for a new digital platform with more possibilities. And let me show you the results of that. Uh, the, the information here is all yeah, sort of nonsense content, but it's just to give you an idea how um, the new platform will look like. In fact, you can just see this as a sort of a summary uh, where you can uh, scroll down and have um, all kinds of different information there. It could be text, text in columns. Uh, we can use uh, pictures there, pictures in the whole width of, the, um, uh, of your screen. Um, <coughs> well, photographs, quotes, um, etc. cetera. Um, here is a, an example of a uh, carousel with different pictures where you can have text in there uh, or not, depending on what you want. And let's see. Um, of course, the use of graphs, in this case dynamic graphs, so you can hoof over um, and see the um, underlying information uh, pop up, uh, like you see also in this uh, example. And then, um, of course, also the maps are uh, involved. You can zoom in and out, um, also click on the different layers. In fact, it's just the same way as uh, we used in the um, uh, earlier example. Also where we can um, use the, um, uh, the different layers for, um, for, for this kind of um, alternatives. 
always a disclaimer and a privacy statement in view. And then we go, um, in, in fact, to the report itself. It's just in, in included in the whole digital content, where you have the navigation uh, structure just in, uh, on the left side of the report. You can scroll down uh, and uh, also here have all that visual information as much as possible, like the graphs, the videos, um, the quotes, the maps, and in this case also an example of uh, a 3D uh, model where you can just look around um, if it's a building or a car, it doesn't matter, and uh, you can click on the sp specific elements to have the specifications, in this case, of the door of this car. And I th then um, a last part of this example is, um, let's see, um, well, this is sort of next chapter in the report, and here you see an example of a 3D uh, GIS map, uh, where, you, where you can also zoom in and out and click on the different uh, elements, in this case, uh, of uh, one of the tanks in this building, and have the specific information available. And the nice thing of this example is also that we can create a PDF out of it, uh, a formatted PDF, and uh, with just one click of a button. So, as you have seen, um, we are able to address a number of the key requirements with this new platform. Creating that frozen version, making that formatted PDF immediately available, um, with the ability to add comments. We also introduced version control, a search engine, um, and the digital report now has a simple navigation structure so that readers can determine exactly where they are in the report. And in addition, the new platform brings technically, technical benefits, including a better access control, uh, secure links to embedded information, and ease of use so that the report can be uh, prepared quickly and easily. Uh, and with these changes, I believe we are witnessing a breakthrough for the EIA industry. Does that, does that mean that we achieved our goal? No, definitely not. Developments will continue well into the future. Every new techno uh, technical advance brings a wide range of new opportunities, but also creates requirements. An example is linking the report and the design uh, process, commonly um, a, 3D, a 3D process uh, today. And today, models can be directly synchronized um, with reports, making it possible for digital uh, reporting to become part of the building information modeling, the BIM process. We don't have the time today to, um, to explore this area further, but um, I would like to briefly mention one element uh, of the design process that relates um, to the development of alternatives um, as part of the EIA process, and that is the opportunity presented by generated design. Generative design allows computers to explore solutions in creative partnership with the designer. This method of designing is already being applied to production processes, but it is also expected to um, add value in, for instance, spatial planning in the future. The first applications um, of this method on a limited scale were demonstrated uh, by Van Weyne at the Autodesk University last year in Las Vegas. Um, as shown in the, um, in the next image, um, video. Generative design changes the way we design the layout of uh, neighborhoods, for example, by feeding the computer a selection of houses and specifying key objectives. The houses and apartments act as constraints for laying out the neighborhood with solar energy, potential, profit, costs, uh, plot size, architectural diversity, and scenic views as primary objectives for enhancing quality of life. With generative design, the computer generates multiple options, and human designers then narrow these down <coughs> to the most viable. By balancing uh, conflicting var uh, uh, variables in this way, we can create attractive neighborhoods um, while meeting fundamental objectives such as uh, zero energy. I consider this a very good example of how digitization can help the EIA process to continue uh, to progress. I started with an example of how EIA report could be made, made more transparent and accessible 
to provide real added value in the decision making process. I've demonstrated that uh, on the basis of our learning experience and the input from stakeholders, we have um, devised an improved version of our digital report. And finally, I've shown that we are still at the frontier of these developments and that, in fact, it may well still be in its infancy. With the digital interactive report, developments are proceeding <coughs> at a rapid pace. I looked up the definition of evolution and it said a slow process of change from one form or level to a better or higher one. Well, my initial, uh, initial reaction, considering its complexity and scope today, is that EAA process has not seen much improvement in recent years. However, as I kept reading, the definition also added, evolution does not take place in a straight, uh, straight steady progression, but is marked by false starts and dead ends, random leaps in different directions, and long periods of no fruitful activity. And here is what I found on the uh, revolution, a very important change in the way that people do things. Well, with that, I leave it up to you to decide whether uh, going digital in impact assessment is an evolution or revolution. And I'm curious to know what the opinion is of the speakers that were asked to reflect on these developments and uh, to briefly share their thoughts with you. So, thank you and yours back to you.